Mr. Vice President, uh, probably the dominant conversation right now in Arizona is about reopening schools. As you may be aware, uh, Arizona has a year-round calendar in many schools, so a lot of kids would wind up going to school about this time of year, as, whereas yeah. other states go back to school in the fall. The president has made this a big issue and, and even threatened to pull or cut federal funding from states that don't comply. If you were in the White House today, what would be your approach to reopening schools? First of all, I'd be leading. I, you know, I want to open schools, and the question is, will the president do the work uh, to make it safe? You know, just ordering schools to open like Trump has uh, done isn't good enough. We've got to do the hard work of getting the virus under control now and over the next two months. And but you're, you're opening now in many cases. But Trump doesn't want to do that hard work. He just wants to order schools to open because he's afraid if he doesn't, it's going to hurt his reelection chances. Well, it's not about his reelection. It's about the safety and security of our children and our teachers in the neighborhoods. Everyone else in our schools, our teachers, the clerks, the administrators, the janitors, all have a stake in this. I laid out back on June 12th the steps that I would take as president in order to be able to reopen our schools. And it starts with resources for the from plexiglass to PPE to clear political guidance that is not not altered or watered down from best practices and the tools that are being suggested. Look what he's done. He's told the CDC to stay out. Don't, 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 don't even get engaged. Finally, we also want to make sure the states and districts have the funding to keep educators on the job in the midst of this economic crisis. I, I, I managed the Recovery Act, which was over 80 some billion dollars. The, and because we, the, 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 there's a reason the federal government doesn't have to have a balanced budget because of times like this, the states have a balanced budget. You're not even gonna be able to have teachers in the classroom. You guys are like every other state in the nation. You have to have a balanced budget and where are you gonna get the money for the teachers? So this president just stop tweeting and start doing the work making sure that we have enough teachers available to go back, making sure when they go back, we have the safety and security and the, and the, and the, and the, and the gear that's needed to protect the students and the teachers in school. You can't turn on the television these days in Arizona without seeing an ad that makes some uh, pretty outrageous claims about you and defunding police. I know you've been asked this question many times, but uh, for Arizonans who are watching right now, where do you stand on defunding the police? I am opposed to defunding police. Matter of fact, I call for putting more money in, $300 million, to provide for, for community policing. The person, if you look at the president's budget, this is a real wake-up call. Look at his budget. He calls for cutting local funding for police nationally now in his budget by almost a half a billion dollars. 400, I think it's $47 million. And look, yeah, you know, we, 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 we have to, have, this has a call to action to finally confront and end the racial injustices that are prevalent in this country and far, far, far too long. As president, I'm going to fight every day to lead these changes and make sure that we lay out the steps that Congress should immediately take for real policing reform. The whole cops to the highest standard which the vast majority of meat. I'm going to invest in shifting our criminal focus from incarceration to prevention ending cash bail, ensuring that one is incarcerated for drug use alone, shouldn't go into being incarcerated. They should be going into mandatory rehabilitation, drug courts, and we should, and much more. They, they should be eligible when they get out for re-entry into, into society from everything from Pell Grants to housing. I'm going to fight to end, you know, look, there's an awful lot. There's an awful lot going on. We have to expand Obamacare, for example. As a pub, with a public option, the fastest way to provide health care. We have to double funding for community health centers and vital fronts. We also have to make all co coronavirus treatment and testing free for everybody. We're going to fight to give every child the same start in life, providing universal pre-K, tripling Title I. I could go on, but the bottom line here is it's about giving police help, giving police help. The vast majority of police are overwhelmingly decent and honorable people. And most of them are embarrassed and absolutely outraged by some of the action that's taken place, like you saw with the Floyd family. And so I, I, I'm not talking about cutting them. And we should provide help for them. They need, as part of their departments, people who are, are engaged in mental health capacity. Mental health, not just for them, but for, but for the cases they go out on. All of it doesn't require a policeman with a weapon. 
Much of it does, but mm -hmm. much of it has to. We have to make, you know, we have to do so much to change the environment so they can, in fact, have an opportunity, they, the police, to do their job because they have every right to be able to come home safe at night, just like anyone else does. You rolled out earlier today uh, the third pillar of your economic plan. It's a, it's a plan that uh, helps to fund uh, caregivers at, at a number of different levels here. Uh, these three different pillars are, are, are pretty expensive, and, and they sound like great plans, but they also cost a lot of money. Um, are you concerned about just the effect on our deficit and our debt uh, and rolling up even more of that that's ultimately going to be paid for by future generations? No, I pay for these. For example, I think that, that capital gains should be taxed at the same rate as normal property, that normal income. That would raise $1.3 trillion over 10. I changed the corporate tax rate. It was 36. It's now 21. I'd raise it back to 28, which we pushed for for eight years. That would raise $730 billion over 10. I'd end stepped up basis. That's $440 billion. I'd make sure every corporation has a minimum tax of at least 15%. Amazon's making billions, doesn't pay a cent. That's 400 billion. I could go down the list here. And there's, for example, just, just sanctions for tax avoidance. That's $200 billion a year. I pay for all this. And by the way, I don't have, as the president did, a $1.4 billion giveaway to the top 1% of the economy, which even even the Heritage Foundation and other conservative think tanks said has not generated the kind of economic growth we need. What I'm talking about will generate economic growth. The economists point out that the plan I laid out for health care, for uh, uh, care workers and educators, will, Ray, will create between three and five million jobs and generate economic growth of a significant consequence that more than pays for the cost. But I pay for it by dealing with, dealing with the, uh, uh, the, the tax deductions I've talked about. I want to ask a couple of specific Arizona questions. Our governor has been criticized uh, greatly for his own handling of the coronavirus crisis, and he's also been accused of bowing to pressure from the White House. And in your mind, do, do Republican governors share some of the blame for this, or, or is this a pressure campaign from the White House that ultimately has led to these spikes that we've continued to see through June and July? Well, look, um it's clear the president of the United States has no idea what he's talking about. It's clear that you see time again, every interview you've conducted them, he just simply lies about the facts, simply lies about what's going on. We, anybody can be tested, and now we don't need testing. And now he's making sure that the hospital rates in your state can't be reported to the, to the, the uh, CDC, can only go to the Department of, of Health, and uh, where, in fact, he has a political appointees. He's moved away every outside, he, uh, excuse me, internal investigator, and said we don't need them. I mean, this is ridiculous. So he is responsible, and he's basically waved the white flag. He said, I'm not responsible. I don't have to do anything. This is, this is all about the governors. And the poor governors, Democrat and Republican, are in a horrible situation. You saw what happens when, in fact, a Republican crosses him as president. You saw what happened to his former attorney general running in Alabama in a primary. And so I imagine, I don't know, I'm not saying I know what the governor's thinking, but he's not thinking very clearly. If he continues to think, he can have wide open, wide open the the, the state. And what do you have? You have a, a hundred, 145,277 positive cases, and 200, 2,795 deaths in Arizona. In the last seven days, 17% of the tests administered were positive. It's a problem. It's a giant problem, and I just wish some of my Republican friends would have the nerve to stand up and say, Mr. President, enough, enough. This is all about the president's reelection chances. He figures if he doesn't just open up and the economy start to move, when in fact the exact opposite has happened. People aren't even going in when the places are opened up. And he's turned this into a, a, a wearing a mask. Wearing a mask is now a political statement? This is more patriotic. Why do you wear the mask so you don't make somebody else sick? I want to ask sick. You. What's with this guy? Steve, that's our time. Okay. All right. I appreciate your time. Uh, thanks so much to uh, Mr. Vice President as well. Thank you. I hope I can see you again. Thank you. Hope so. Thank you.